Hello Travelers, Boardman21 here, and today is a 1-75 to leveling guide for the Rogue to Blade Dancer using Flurry. We're going to be channeling Flurry melee damage. You're going to be attacking super, super fast, and what this really takes advantage of is getting all of the extra health you can get on hit, the leech you can get on hit, and being able to hit so many times and doing so many crits with it that you'll be able to replenish all of your life incredibly quickly, making to where you not only kill things pretty quick, although AoE can be a bit of a problem but overall your single target once you get force wave you can have a decent aoe but you're able to replenish your life so quickly with so many hits that your survivability is really really high in fact we face tanked the chapter 9 nagase boss as soon as we got to her in a solo self-found character so it was really really tanky and it allowed us to just kind of keep moving forward even if attacking and damage was a little low we were always progressing forward we had very few deaths it was very very tanky and while we didn't play it in hardcore i would recommend that if you played hardcore Core, this is one way to do it and not have to worry about dying so much because you can replenish your health so quickly with this build. Now this also revolves around shifting and having it proc shuriken so you can do a little extra damage, have some extra physical shred that way, and you will also be able to get increased armor thanks to the shurikens. You can have decoy, smoke bomb, all the other utilities that would increase your defense a little bit, but overall it was pretty quick, it went pretty fast, 1 to 75, very few deaths, and overall the damage really isn't that bad. Once you get force wave on flurry, you have some AoE. So let's go ahead and get started with this leveling guide. All right, travelers, we're now level four. We've just started off. We've got about 150 health, no resistances yet. Only had one thing drop so far. Nice amulet with some mana regen, which we don't really need. This thing had about 6% armor, no damage types yet. Like I said, no items or anything that we found. For skills, we are going to spec into our first skill. It will be flurry, and we're going to go ahead and start building towards channeling it to try and get as fast attacks as we can get. So, one point in Alacrity. For passives, we've got two points. We're going to go ahead and put both of them into the Swift Assassin for that attack speed and that added physical damage just to give us a nice boost early on. And then for items, just so you guys can see them in this one, as I said, we've only found an amulet so far. All right, I'll see you guys at level 8.
All right, travelers, we are now level eight. We got just over 200 health, slowly working on our resistances. At this point, you really want to work on getting void. You really want to work on getting physical up, really all of them, but mostly just focus on void and physical at this point. We have about 18% damage reduction through armor. If you do get some early on armor, it's really powerful for reducing the damage you take from hits. We have a little bit of dodge, and as a rogue, we will be building into dodge quite a bit. Not much for damage types. We do have 44% increased physical damage. We're looking for life on hit on a weapon right now, just so that we can have our life replenished since we don't really have much leech at the moment. For skills, we got three more points for Flurry. We're going to put two of them in Alacrity, and then one of them in Boundless Blow, so that we will now be channeling it. The next thing that we're going to want to work towards is getting mana back so that we can channel forever so that's where our next points will go is up towards sap willpower for our second skill we want something for aoe you have a few choices you could do shurikens you could do cinder strike you could do acid flask but for me i'm going to go ahead and go with puncture we haven't played around with it too much but with puncture we're going to end up going into the extra mirages so that we can get some nice aoe clear out of it so our first point is going to go into timing we'll put two there and then we'll work into penumbral ambush and that'll give us some nice aoe with it for passives we got five more points all of them are going to go into swift assassin for more attack speed and even more added physical damage and then for the items just going to hover over them like i said the build planner will be in the description below at all the timestamps, and it will also be in the written guide for you so you can take a look and that'll be it i'll see you guys at level 12. Alright travelers, we are now level 12, we got just over 250 health, still working on our resistances, haven't found any void yet to put on, we do have a little bit of physical, we're starting to get a little bit of elemental, we got about 17% armor, nothing's really been too much of a challenge, we did find some life on hit for our weapon, so that does replenish our health a little bit, which has been helpful, and once we started channeling, our damage went up, and we're getting a lot more hits per second. And we still have about that 44% physical damage increase. For skills, we got one more point for Flurry. We're going to go ahead and put it into Blood Reverie. This will give us some leech. And we'll continue building on until we can start getting that mana back so that we are become a mana generator instead of a mana spender. Then for Puncture, we got three more points. One more point is going to go into Timing. And then one point will go into the Penubal Ambush so that we now get three Mirages. If you want to see what this looks like, we'll do it real quick. And this will be your AoE once we've turned Flurry into a mana generator. So instead of one puncture, you now get three. So you get some AoE with it, you'll get multiple hits. It's actually really nice. And then for that fourth point, we're going to go ahead and put it into Splinter so that we get some physical res shred chance on hit. And then for passives, we have four more points. We're going to cap out the Swift Assassin. We're going to put one point in Twin Blades so that we can now do a wield, which is definitely going to increase the amount of damage that we do. And then we're going to start building into Guile for that dodge rating and for the poison resist. And for our items, just going to hover over them. Like I said, this build planner, along with all the other build planners for all the levels, will be with their timestamps inside the description and the written guide. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 20.
All right, travelers, we are now level 20. We get to spec into our third specialization skill. Right now we have almost 300 health. Still working on our resistance. We did manage to almost cap down our void, which really helped with survivability. We're still mostly using a little bit of leech inside the flurry tree and health on hit in order to keep our health full. We got about 12% armor, 11% dodge, and we have about 50% physical damage at this point. Dual wielding and getting that added flat physical damage really helped make Flurry hit much harder, and it's actually been doing quite well. For skills, we got three more points for Flurry. We're going to put one more point in Blood. We're going to put one point in Second Wind, and this is going to give us even more health when we hit at least one enemy with Flurry. And then we're going to put one point in Sap Willpower, so that as long as we hit at least one enemy, we're going to get one mana back. So we're going to get one mana for every hit we do, which is going to keep our mana full, which means that Puncture will become our mana spender. And we're going to go ahead and try and increase the range with it. So we're going to put one point into Splinter and then two points into Cross Forward. For our third skill, we're going to go ahead and spec into Shift. We're going to go with two points into Shadow Recuperation so that we are healed when we use it. Eventually, we'll have it proc Shuriken so we can get some increased armor. And then for now, we're going to go with two points in Swift Recovery so that we get more of the mana back when we use it. That way it doesn't take all of our mana because right now, with a mana cost of about 23, it takes almost half of our mana just to use shift one time. For passives, we got nine more points. We're going to go ahead and cap out Guile. And then we're going to put three points in Steady Hand for that dex and that additional health. We're going to save all the points at this point until we mastered. And then we're going to start putting all of our points into the Blade Dancer. For items, we are dual wielding now. We are making sure that we have that health on melee hit. After that, melee critical strike chance, physical damage, added physical damage. Basically, that's all that you want to stack for the weapons. And then the rest of these, I'm just going to hover over them. Once again, the build pointer will be in the description below with the timestamp or in the written guide if that's where you prefer to go. And I'll see you guys at level 24, 25 when we choose the mastery. Alright travelers, we are now level 25, we have almost 400 health, we're still working on our resistance, but we have almost capped out the void, we're still working on physical, we've gotten quite a bit of poison, most of that from passives, but we are still working on it. elemental at this point, and necrotic, still very important. We got about 11% armor, 15% dodge, again dodge will be a very big part of this, later on we'll build into shurikens and up our armor just a tad. And then for damage, most of our damage, just from added physical damage. But we also have a little bit of increase here, almost 50%. And then we're going to go ahead and choose our Mastery, which we're going to be a Blade Dancer. This will give us plus one maximum shadows, which we will not be building into. This will give us 15 melee physical damage, which is a really nice boost. And we will get more dodge rating, which is really nice. For skills, we got one more point for Flurry. We're going to put it into Sap Willpower. This is for the mana gain. For Puncture, we got two more points. Both of them are going to go into Shatter as we build towards the Shadow Daggers so that um, while 
puncture will be our AoE, and it's not going to deal huge damage on its own. We are going to make it apply the Shadow Dagger so that on the plunge, we can have a big hit with it. And then for shift, we got three more points, two of them going into Swift Recovery, and one point into Momentum. For passives, we got seven points, all of them going into Blade Dancer. We're going to put five into Cloak of Shadows. And then the last two will go into once so that we have four more melee physical damage along with more dodge rating if we have been hit recently. And then for items, again, just going to hover over them, but you can find the build planner, which will have all of this, everything that you see inside of it. And that will be with the timestamp below, as well as in the written guide if you follow that. And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 35. <laughs>travelers we're now level 35 we're still working on our resistance trying to get up the physical trying to get up the necrotic and at this point going to start working on elemental as we start to get into the later chapters we've got nine percent armor 21 percent dodge again we'll still build into this we will be wearing two swords so on both swords we can put increased percentage to dodge rating which will be very helpful and then for damage types we do now have just over 50% physical damage. We also have an idol that gives us increased physical damage, but on our swords that we're wearing, we're still going for melee physical damage. We're going to go for dodge rating, and we're still going for health on kill, even though we are starting to get some good leech out of Flurry itself. For skills, we got three more points to go ahead and put into it. We're going to put two into Relentless for that attack speed and one point into Adrenaline Rush. For Puncture, we got three more points. We're going to go ahead and spec two of them into Timing. And then we're going to put one point into Seized Prey. We will eventually hopefully get slowed on one of our items, which will boost the damage we do with it just a little bit. And then for Shift, we got four points to put into it. We're going to cap out the momentum, and then we're going to start building into Shurikens. So two points into the Sleight of Hand so that we can proc Shurikens. And that being said, our fourth skill will be Shurikens. We got five points for three of them are going to go into Alacrity. One of them will go into Thin Shurikens, and then one of them into Blade Shield. So they will now cast around us. Now when we shift, two of them will become available. They don't pierce yet, and they don't give us the increased armor, but eventually we'll build into that. We'll be able to get five of them. They'll pierce. They'll be up the whole time. We can increase the duration. So every time we shift, we'll have five of them spinning, and we'll get a total of 150% increased armor between all five of them which will help with our defense. For passives, we got 14 more points. We're going to go ahead and cap out the Cloak of Shadows. We're going to cap out the Once. This leaves us with 5 points. We're going to put 4 of them into Pursuit. And then we're going to put 1 of them... Uh, we'll just put the 5th one into Pursuit as we continue on. Eventually, we're going to want to get into this Flash of Steel, and we're going to get into the Blood Dance. It'll give us more Leech. And then, of course, you always want to get into the Weapons of Choice which with the two swords is going to end up giving us 35% glancing blow, which will really boost our survivability. And then for items, we did find one unique, the Viper Tail. Not mandatory for the build, but for us it is going to help us do some extra poison. It also does apply that slow on hit, so that puncture would do a little extra damage. And then for everything else, I'm just going to hover over it. Right now on our weapons, again, going for the melee physical damage, going for the health on hit, going for the increased dodge rating if you can get it. That's pretty much the basics. Other than that, just try and cap your resistance. Again, this build planner, or this will be in the build planner, which will be in the description below and in the written guide.
And that'll be it for this update. I'll see you guys at level 43. <laughs>travelers we are now level 43 we have exactly 500 health we're still working on resist at this point we're really working on our elemental as we're in heoborea and moving forward elemental is kind of the main thing along with physical against all the archers but you know if you have all of them keep working towards all of them at the same time we're working on a bit of dodge we have a bit of armor we're going to get a bit more armor once we get some increased armor with the shurikens and then we're also building into glancing blow at this point for our damage types we're still about 50 percent physical damage and still haven't added in any critical strike multiplier for defense Got a little bit of extra endurance, but still no critical strike avoidance. We'll start building into that probably right after the campaign. We got some skills, some more points for Flurry. Two more points, we're going to put both of them into Deep Strikes for some more damage. For Puncture, two more points, going to put both of them into Seized Prey for that more damage against slowed enemies. For Shift, we got three more points, we're going to cap out the Sleight of Hand. So now when we shift, we'll have the five shurikens spinning around us, which will give us increased armor and start doing some physical shred for us so we can do more damage with flurry and puncture. And then for shurikens, four points and ethereal blades will make them pierce so they won't disappear. They'll only hit every target once, but at least you'll be able to hit all targets with them. And then we're going to cap out the increased armor with bladed armor, so three points there. So we'll have five of them active, so we'll have 150% increased armor after we shift. And then one point into abrasive arsenal, so we'll get some physical red shred with each one of those hits. For passives, we got 11 more points. We're going to cap out the Pursuit. We're going to put one point in Shroud of Dusk. We're going to cap out the Blood Dance so we get even more Leech. We're going to put one point in Flash of Steel and then one point in Weapons of Choice. This is where our next seven points will go so that we get that Glancing Blow with the two swords to increase our survivability. And then, as requested, I'm going to go ahead and show you guys all the gear. I'm just going to hover over it. This build planner will be with the timestamp below in the description as well as in the written guide for you to click on. And that'll be it for this build guide. I will see you guys at level 50 when we spec into our fifth skill.
Alright, Travelers, we're now level 50. We're about to take on Lilith and Lagan. Still working on our resistance. Would like to have capped out Lightning at this point, but we do have a pretty high amount of Elemental. Physical would be nice to have a bit higher, but this is what we have. We got about 8% Armor, 16% Dodge. We do have quite a bit of Glancing Blow, and we will be building more into Glancing Blow once we put some more points into our Passive Tree here for damage. We still have about that 40 to 50% physical damage that we have. Same amount of critical strike multiplier. Again, we're just attacking really quick on your weapons. Make sure to have added physical damage. Try to get some critical strike chance. Have your health on hit. And if you can, go ahead and put increased dodge rating if you found any of that. For skills, we got one more print for flurry. We're going to go ahead and put the point into precision. We're going to be working our way down to the force wave. So the next two points will work towards that so we get a little bit more melee range with it. For Puncture, we got one more point. We're going to cap out the Sea Spray for a little bit more hit damage against Immobilized or Slowed. For Shift, one more point. We're going to take Shadow Slip for that invulnerability while shifting. For Shurikens, two more points. We're going to put them both into Abrasive Arsenal for that Physical Shred so that Flurry and the Shuriken hits will deal more damage. And then for our fifth skill, we're going to go ahead and spec into Smoke Bomb. We're going to cap out the Lingering Fumes so we have the max duration possible with it. And then one point in Shrouded in Darkness for that Glancing Blow and getting the Dust Route every two seconds. The next four points will go into Rapid Concealment so that we can get that dust route every second instead of two seconds so one point there to make it a little bit more frequent then for passives we got seven more points all of them are going into weapons of choice which will really up the amount of glancing blow chance that we have so we just gained 35 percent more chance for that 35 percent damage reduction which will make us quite a bit more tanky and then you guys still want to see the items so i'm just going to hover over them real quick like i said on the weapons go for the health on hit melee critical strike chance dodge rating we do have the viper tail it's not mandatory again this is a solo self-found mode so you don't have to have it and this build planner will be linked below in the description and in the written guide and that'll be it for this update i'll see you guys at level 55
Alright, Travelers, we are now level 55. We've just started the Mon with the Fate. We're in the Fall of the Outcast. We have just over 750 health. Still working on our resistance. We'll have to get our Necrotic and Void up. We kind of changed stuff around to get it physical and poison as high as possible for the Majasa fight, which went well. We got about 14% armor, 15% dodge. We'll continue to build into both of these. Remember, your armor will go up when you have the Shurikens active. For instance, when I shift, you can see we jump up and get a little bit more damage reduction. So getting some flat armor will boost that even more. We have almost 50% uh, physical damage, which is the same amount that we've had basically the whole time, but we'll continue to build into that once we get some better weapons. And then Critical Strike Multiplier will be something we build into as well. For defense, we're going to start working towards getting our Critical Strike Avoidance. We do have a little bit of extra endurance, but we'll try capping that out as well. For skills, we got one more point for Flurry. We're going to go ahead and throw it into Crescendo. And the next point, we'll go into that Force Wave, which will give us some range, which will be really nice. For Puncture, we're going to put one point into Death's Imprint. We still don't use Puncture very often. And honestly, for the AoE, I just kind of still use Flurry. We just kind of spin circles. It attacks fast enough. Still feels pretty good. For Shift, one more point. We're going to put it into Elusive for that extra dodge rating per point of Dex. For Shurikens, we got one more point. Going to cap out the Abrasive Arsenal for that... Uh, physical shred which will allow us to do more damage and then inside smoke bomb we're going to cap out the rapid concealment so we can get a dust route every second then we're going to cap out the smoke blades this will give us more melee damage which will help flurry just a little bit and then we're going to get the shuriken's bleed chance next which is going to allow us to do even more bleeds with the shurikens that are spinning around us as they hit enemies for passives we got seven more points we're going to cap out the critical eye this will give us critical strike vulnerability on our hits as well as more critical strike chance. So we should get to 100% crit within a few seconds at most, hopefully in under one second on enemies. And then we're going to go ahead and put the last two points into Flash of Steel. And once we get to about that 100% critical strike chance, we'll start building into the all-in to get more critical strike multiplier. But at this time, we do a lot of non-critical hits, so I don't really want to reduce that just yet. Then for items, because you guys asked, just going to hover over them, still going for the same things. Physical damage added to the weapons, melee attack speed, melee crit chance, and health on hit. You don't really need the health on hit at this point. You can definitely replace that with dodge rating on the swords, as you're getting a ton of leech at this point, and you're getting health on hit and on crit inside of the skill trees themselves. And that will be it for this update. Again, this build planner will be in the description below as well as the written guide. Alright, Travelers, we are now level 65. We have exactly 900 health. We're still working on our resistances, slowly capping them. We need a lot more elemental, but we've gotten our physical poison, necrotic, and void up quite high. We're sitting at about 16% armor. Have a bit of dodge. We will be starting to build into dust shrouds a lot more, which is going to give us a lot more dodge, and it will also give us a higher glancing blow chance for some damage reduction. We did gain a little bit more physical damage. We're sitting at just over 60% now, and we still haven't built too much into critical strike multiplier, but we will start building into that as we gear a little more ultimately. For defense, we do have our 100% critical strike avoidance. We are wearing the woven flesh to get that capped out. The next thing that we're going to be working on is trying to get a little bit more endurance. For skills, we got two more points for flurry. One point is going to go into the shockwave for the force wave on use to give us a little more AoE. And then we're going to put one more point into precision for that base critical strike chance as we work towards getting more health on crits because we're doing a ton of crits. 
For Puncture, we have two more points. We're going to go ahead and throw one more into Dust Imprint for that Shadow Dagger chance. We're really not using the skill very much, but if you like it, you can definitely continue to use it. And then one more point into Shatter. For Shift, we got two more points. We're going to go ahead and throw both of them into Elusive. So we have even more dodge rating for one second after shifting. For Shurikens, we got two more points. We're going to go ahead and put them both into Floating Blades. So when we do shift, we get that increased armor from the Shurikens that are spinning around us. And this will just help them last a bit longer. And we got three more points for Smoke Bomb. We're going to go ahead and put these points into Hidden Blows so that our Shurikens will have that bleed chance as well as the Puncture. And since the Shurikens are automatically spinning around us, this will just help us get a little bit more bleed damage out of the build. For passives, we got 10 more points. We're going to put 5 of them into All In for that Critical Strike Multiplier. And then we're also going to put 5 points into Veal of Night. This will give us more melee attack speed, so we will attack faster. And then we also have a chance on each one of our hits to get a Dust Shroud, which is going to help us raise up that dodge rating and our Glance and Blow chance. And then for items, as you guys wanted, I'm just going to hover over them. We do have a few uniques. We defeated an Orbis. We got the... Siphon of English Ring for a little extra Doom damage. We are wearing the Woven Flesh from the Abomination for that Critical Strike Avoidance. And then the main things you're still looking at is just getting a lot of melee damage leached as health. And then work on your resistance. And then I'll just hover over the items. Again, these will be in the build planner in the description below and in the written guide. travelers we are now level 75 and this is the final update for this leveling guide we have just over 950 health we have capped most of our resistance we're a little shy on lightning poisons are lowest but void necrotic fizz cold and fire are pretty close to capped you can of course want to get those completely capped as you continue on got 19 percent armor that does go up a bit when we shift and we get our shurikens out and we got 14 percent dodge which we'll be building into that a bit more as we build into more dust shrouds to get more of that flat 50 dodge rating per stack of that and 
can get more glancing blow for defense we do have the 100 percent critical strike avoidance we built a little bit more into endurance and for damage types we're currently sitting at only 30 percent physical we did swap out a sword but it did give us a big bonus when it came to other stats that are on it which we'll get to when we cover it and we have a lot more critical strike multiplier we went from 200 percent up to 322 since the last update for skills, we got one more point for Flurry. We're going to go ahead and put the one point in Incision, and then the very last point when we get it, we'll go to Heal on Crit, so we get even more life every time that we do a hit. For Puncture, we got one more point. We're going to go ahead and throw it into Shatter. Again, not using it at this point. Feel free to change it into something that you'd rather test out, as it's kind of just an open slot. For Shift, we got one more point. We're going to put it in Elusive. For Shurikens, one more point. We're going to go ahead and keep putting into Floating Blades for the duration. For Smoke Bomb, one more point. We're going to cap out that Hidden Blows for even more bleed chance with the Shurikens. If you have Smoke Bomb active, you're inside of it, and you have the Shurikens spinning around you. For Passives, 10 more points. We're going to cap out the Flash of Steel for more melee attack speed, as well as more increased damage while dual wielding, which we are. And then 5 points into a Suvon's Pact for more flat dodge rating and increased damage when we're at full health, which is most of the time. And then for items, what we finished up here with is the Woven Flesh, the Viper Tail, a Siphon of Anguish, and then for the Crafted Items, just going to hover over them. The Build Planner will be in the description below as well as in the Written Guide. This is the new sword that we got. It had a bunch of increased dodge rating, a big chance to bleed on hit, and that added physical damage. And that'll be it for this guide. Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll see you guys next time.